Glamour, opulence, luxury yachts. The luxury yachts are over there. This is the boat we can afford. This is Monaco, home of the EPT Grand Final. We are on the Mediterranean, literally, for the final stop of EPT 11. And fittingly, it is the most expensive main event on the tour. Yeah, 10,000 euros buys you a seat, a shot at the title, and a chance to become a member of the exclusive Millionaires Club. This is going to be sick, and probably so is he. Well, two of the sickest EPT heroes are spinning up their stacks on day two and will face off at the feature table. Ludovic Geilich's Uber Agro play is his signature style, but that got him into trouble at last year's grand final. Last year, I had a good stack and kind of had a blow up at the end of day one, then busted quite early in day two. Ludo needs to avoid another meltdown and beware of Ola Shemian on his direct left. Obviously, he's a good player. You don't want to really be playing with him out of position. Even in possession, is going to make it tough. Ola strikes fear into his opponents with precise and intimidating moves. As the current chip leader, he's primed to take on all comers. I'm just ready with my game to go against everybody. I always have a plan, so I'm pretty confident. Ola and Ludo are top of the leaderboard. Can they wield those big stacks effectively and continue to dominate the grand final? It's a beautiful sunny day here in Monaco. And the roof of the Salle des Etoiles has been opened as players re-enter the tournament room. Bad news, Vanessa. I just fed every bird outside. Hope you brought an umbrella. Andre, let us do the filming. What do you think these expensive cameras are for, you knucklehead? And that is some classic Jason Mercier just being there. Johnny Laden, fun fact, he never learned to read. Hashtag fake facts. Ike Haxton and Steve O'Dwyer might look like two giant nerds, but they're two very rich nerds. Well, the roof is closing, which means play is about to begin here at the PokerStars and Monte Carlo Casino EPT Grand Final. Ola Shemian on the feature table, nice. Now, a couple of years ago, Ola tried a huge river bluff against Igor Kurganov at this very table. Igor called, Ola went out. Ludovic Geilich at this table, wild animal eats a banana. Story checks out. Ola, see? Could not have been. I think it was exactly like no, this. No, 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 dude, you were right there. Oh, you right there. Two years ago? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I was right here. Am I the only one that didn't walk past the banana tree this morning? You want to bet on it? No. I wouldn't take it. 
Huh? I wouldn't take the bet. You wouldn't? No. I mean, because I know it. Is he right? Of course he's right. Like I know, know it. You're so nice, Igor. So Kurganov, Shemian and Gailek headline this feature table. Also on the main stage, one of last year's finalists, Maya Roka, and a raft of Russians. Oh, hello, Gully. <laughs> this should be fun. Blinds 1,000-2,000 with a 300 ante. Pop quiz, Hardigan. Which event is this and what day is it? Hundreds of thousands spent on that screen. I'm glad it was worth it. <laughs> Ludo folds under the gun. On a Shemian with Ace King. He raises to 4K. Eric Svez with pocket eights. Is it too early to be headed to Flipsville? That's a re raise for a significant percentage of Svez's stack. Three bet to 16,200. Action folded back around to Shemian. How much you play total? 2888 behind. What's he doing? No, 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 no. no. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's prepared to flip. Whoops. Sorry. It's okay. Sorry. No worries. I think I have to wait for a good flop here. I call. I assume that might have gone all in had Svez not pushed his chips in the middle. You're gonna want to see all five cards with Ace King. So Shemian with a wheel draw and two overs. Svez still ahead with eights. He's probably gonna see all five cards. Check. What is? Now he's all in. And Shemian calls. I don't know what to call this. It should have been a race pre-flop, but I guess it's like meeting an internet date after midnight. Sooner or later, it's all kicking off. Thanks for the insight into your life. Oh, this is a uh, turny deciding flip. <laughs> Ace king. This is always... For you? It leads the way. Oh, wow. I had no idea about that. But I believe you. That you know. Cutest Jedi ever. So, Eric Svez at risk, but ahead. Just one card to come. Eric has to fade an ace, king, or four to survive. Don't you know you're against all the Sorry, Svez. It's a safe card for the Frenchman. He doubles up. That's a new one. I wonder which app he was kissing. I hope it was our podcast. Sorry, Ola. Hmm? You're out. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Keep it together, Ola. Don't let him know how much that hurt. Don't let him. Well, on our secondary feature table, we have a former grand final champ, and he's all in against a previous PCA winner. Steve O'Dwyer ahead with Ace Jack against Demita Danchev's Ace Six. Ace Jack holding butch opportunities. Only a six busts O'Dwyer. I know Steve loves it when we do it. Do some more. Do it slowly. Oh, Dwyer doubles. 11 2. I love you two. He's still short, though, just 13 big blinds. Well, out in the field, Vanessa Selbst has just moved all in. Action is on Dmitry Ponomarev. Really that explains the giant glove that I'm kidding. Queen high flop with two hearts. This is a pretty big shove. Dimitri calls. Vanessa has top two. Only one pair for Panomarev. Hard to fold ace queen there, but with the ace of hearts in his hand, he should know that means she's not going to have as many flush draws. Huge double up for Vanessa Selbst. Now that was fast. I couldn't even follow it. It was Vanessa, right, who won? Yes, and Vanessa is now playing around 156k and is an above average stack. Ludovic Gailik and Ola Shemian are still the overall chip leaders, with 162 players remaining. Well, among those recently eliminated from the EPT Grand Final, 2014 World Series of Poker main event champ Martin Jakobsen. Bye. 
And Mike Timex McDonald. Mike. Squee. And it looks like Liv Barry is also heading for the exit. Ola, can you let Liv know when you're done she doesn't be late again for the no sleeve convention? Back at the feature table, action is on Liv's boyfriend, Igor Kurganov. He's facing an under-the-gun rage from Eric Svez. Have we seen this guy before? I'm not sure, but his Svez is familiar. Oh, man. I'm so sorry. Well, it's been folded around to Ludovic Gylek in the small blind. Angus McAngus. He's kind of like a bagpipe. Real noisy and nobody knows how it works. Ace deuce offsuit. Has made it 4,600 with ace 10 of diamonds. Ludo's gonna make it 15,800. It's a pretty aggressive three bet. I guess he doesn't want to just call out of position against an under the gun race. Ooh, Jax for Olashemian in the big blind. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Shemian flats the three bet. This should be setting off Ludo's Sean Connery alarm. You know the alarm all Scottish people are born with that lets them know when someone's trying to Connery them. Sven's calls as well. Three way to the flop. And it's a king high flop. Shemian's still ahead with Jax. Ludo's got almost zero equity, but luckily he also gives zero you know what's. 50,000 in the middle. This is a continuation bet of 21,500. And Ola's not folding for one bet. Nerp. Shemian calls. Seferiously, Svez, consider this getting off easy. He folds. Heads up to the turn. The Seven of Hearts pairing the board. Ludo went from 1% equity on the flop to 5% on the turn. Not bad. Still only ace high. But it looks like he's betting again. 48,000. This guy's pretty nuts, huh? And it doesn't look like Shemian's folding. He calls again, and this hand's going to the river, with 189k in the middle already. Neither player's got that amount behind. And Shemian rivers a boat. So not only is Ludo losing, but he'd have a better chance of getting Olo to do the truffle shuffle than to fold. Gaelic does not empty the clip, he checks. Obviously Olo's betting. All in. All you can eat. And Ludo snap faults. This is one of those hands that can look pretty terrible in a vacuum, so we just explain it away by saying table dynamics. Ola Shemian up to 349k. He's taken the chip lead. Yes, on. Thank you, Jax. It's quite possible. Yes, on. If it's a brick, I think I probably should. Brick a dune. Ludovic Gaelic is Scotty the Engineer's ne'er-do-well stepson, and Ola Shemian is James Franco's somehow cooler brother. So an early battle of the big stacks here in Monaco on day two of the EPT Grand Final. Hello, my babies. Want to listen to more of my jokes and embarrassing stories without poker getting in the way? Subscribe to EPT Not Live on iTunes or download it from soundcloud.com slash EPT Not Live. There's guests, competitions, online dating. You can even get some behind the scenes gossip on the show you're watching right now. That's right, more layers than an advanced Rubik's Cube, which has two layers. More layers than that. EPT Not Live. Here we are again, hanging around, waiting for Joe Stapleton. 
expecting him to show up in some ridiculous costume as the result of some confusion. Greetings, James Hartigan. Ah, ah, ah. Don't tell me you're the Count of Monte Carlo. Yes, yes, thank you. The Count of Monte Carlo, the guy in the costume shop, tried to tell me that wasn't a thing. Oh, it's a thing. Now it's a thing. Thank you. It's day two of the PokerStars and Monte Carlo Casino EPT Grand Final. We just saw Olashemian regain the chip lead from Ludovic Gailic in a hand that's led many to ask, what was Ludo thinking? The blinds are one and two key. I'm on a small blind. They've got ace two offsuit. Under the gun makes it like 46. So I thought to myself, if I just like three bet quite big, I can take control of this pot. I make it 15.8, because I'm going to make it quite big out of position anyway. And all the shemian tank calls. In this spot here, all you can have nines, tens, jacks, queens, kings, ace, queen. He's not going to flat ace, king. I don't think so anyway. The other guy who's opened originally, he flats. It comes king, six, seven, two spades, which is a good board for me, because I've got like ace, king a lot here. So there's like 50k in the pot. I make it like 21.5. He flats. The other guy folds. Turn card's a good card. Seven of hearts. I know I need to fire three here. I bet the turn for 48,000. He calls, and I'm not too happy, obviously, because I need to probably shove this river. If he makes a good call with jacks or queens or nines or tens, so be it. But I don't think he would if he's got kings. I've done the stack, basically. It comes to jack. If I'd shove the river, I need to run off like 50-50 now, if this is going to get through or not. 50% of the time, it's going to get called because he's got kings or jacks. The other 50% of the time, he's going to fold. Probably shouldn't have put myself in this spot. I obviously decide to give up. He shoves. All in. But I'm pretty sure he has, like, jacks. It maybe saved me if I did shove the river and he made a good call with jacks because he did say after the hand that he, he just didn't believe me during the whole hand. And jacks. It's quite possible. Can I please get some subtitles on that guy? Come on! So 148 players remain, blinds are still 1-2, and on this hand at our feature table, we're going to sweat with Igor Kurganov and play the hand from his perspective. 45. Ace, three of hearts, a raise to 4,500. Early position, but they're suited! Folded around to last year's fourth place finisher, Mayo Roca. He passes. Ludo. Also faults. How much? Four or five. Shemian on the button. Ah, oh, nice. Real nice. Shemian in position. Nice. Real nice. He calls. Eric Svez folds the small blind. Gully gives up the big blind. Goodbye, Gully. Heads up to the flop. And from Igor's point of view, right colour, wrong suit. He does have straight draws, though. Nine. He really only wants to make one of those straights, though, so it's kind of like a woo, but not really. He's continued for 9,000. Standard continuation bet. We see this all the time. It's really tough for Ola to float us with just nothing. He calls. A turn card is another five. I think the move is for us to barrel again here, though I'm glad it's Igor's chips and not mine. We gotta bet this because even our gin card isn't gonna beat the stronger hands in all his range. 
Kurganov's made it 21 and a half thousand. And once again, Shemian calls. Can we fold now? All right, I guess we'll see the river. The river card is a deuce. Kurgles makes it straight. Well, that is, in fact, our gin card. There's nearly 76k in the middle. Kurganov's got 58k behind. All in. He shoves. I call it. Ah. Fred. No good. Shemian with a full house. Fours full of fives. Whoops. All right. And Kurganov eliminated. You cover me, right? <laughs> like an Afghan. <laughs> Barely. Nice hand. Thank you. Full house again? Yeah. yeah. Must be nice. <laughs> oh no. And Liv's arrived just in time. I know, big stage. No. <laughs> oh, I have to break up with you now. Oh, let's escape this awkwardness and go to the outer tables where Jason Mercia has gone to the flop against Giuliano Bendinelli. Jason has checked. Bendinelli bets 11,000. Bendinelli like Beckman and What is it? Beckham? Beckham and Anelli. Did I get it? If I say yes, will you stop trying? Absolutely. Jason's called the 11K. Six of spades on the turn. I'm going to say Jason's got two sevens and just hope we don't get the showdown. He checks for a second time. And Bendinelli checks behind. Oh, you can say it, no problem. Show off. The river's a 10. That puts a potential straight out there. And this gets checked to showdown. Jason with second pair top kicker. And it's good. Bendinelli mucks. Pair of sevens, pair of jacks. They're pretty much the same hand. Uh-uh. You're not getting away with that one. Next hand, please. Jason. Up to 218,000, roughly double the tournament average. Across the room, Vanessa Selps has been three bet by Ollie Price. Four bet shove. And a call. Ollie with queens, Vanessa with nines. Vanessa's really stepped in it here. I know, that's why I shot. Nice hand. It's never over till it's over. And there's a nine on the flop. Gross. Vanessa now a 90% favorite. Ollie Price down to one out. And he doesn't hit. That's exactly why I shoved, because I knew. Ugh. Can it, Selps? Stuff your sorries in a sack. Vanessa now up to 209,000. She is seventh in chips overall, sitting behind Jason Mercier on the leaderboard. Ola Shemian is still number one, while Ludovic Geilich has dropped down to nine, just ahead of fellow Brit Charlie Carroll. And talking of Charlie, he is all in at one of the outer tables. He has shoved the river, and the decision is on Alexander Timokin. Timokin, stressed. Charlie gets a fold. And shows the bluff. That's when you go, ah, yeah, you still had me beat. Uh -huh. just, trying to, just trying to emulate your play. <laughs> you. I don't know. I feel like maybe he folded the best hand. What do you guys think? Hopefully doing that on the TV will be good advertising. <laughs> now I just knit up for the rest of my life. <laughs> you can't do it anymore. Charlie chatting with World Series of Poker Europe champ Adrian Mateos. That and looking like Benny Spindler is quite good for the, for the table image. <laughs> Don't forget dressing like you got your clothes on a vision quest. Back to our feature table. Where well, the action has been folded around to Agro Ludo. It's now on Shemian. Ace three in the hijack. It raises to 4,000. Round to the button. Now the blinds. Mark Noyens from Luxembourg is the player in the bag. <laughs> oh wait, you're being serious. He's really from Luxembourg? 
Yes, Joe, it's a real place. Okay. He defends. 24 back, right? I guess you gotta defend with that hand, but I am not in love with this spot. Ooh, Shemian flops trips, and that's a raw flush draw for Noyans. I mean, it looks good, but there's just one card you can hit. Shemian bets 3,000. All in. Noyan shoves with his draw, and Shemian calls. Tough to get any piece of that board to fold, but this all went down pretty standard. Noyan's does have 11 outs, more than one card he can hit. It's one card for the Royal, come on, get off my back. We want to see a jack of clubs here. <laughs> but first ace. No tree of clubs. Ace and then jack of clubs. I'm ready for that. Okay, thank you. The turn card is the five of clubs. Noyan's now a 76% favorite to double up. Flush got there, but Shemian's got plenty of outs. Noyan's has to fade a three, five, king, or ace on the river. It's a three. Ah, oh, that is the grossest way to lose that hand. The board giveth and the board taketh away. I played <laughs> again full house. How do you do it, Ola? How do you own so many souls? My secret is just to try to understand the dynamics, the mood of the people, build like images of people and use that to make the right decisions. Well, Ola's been making all the right decisions here in Monaco. You could qualify for the next EPT Grand Final right now at PokerStars.com. Now, the one thing everybody knows is that the Count of Monte Carlo had a wicked huge buried treasure hidden somewhere around these parts. Obviously. By the way, you do know it's the Count of Monte Cristo, right? <laughs> How can there be a Count of a cigar? Next, you're going to tell me there's an Earl of Sandwich. Yes, there is. You don't believe me? No, I think I swallowed a tooth. <coughs> It's the third one today. I'm gonna have a rough day tomorrow. Overwhelming chip leader Ola Shemian has been dominating the feature table here at the Poker Stars and Monte Carlo Casino EPT Grand Final as the gap widens between him and Ludovic Gailek. Ola Shemian is definitely one of the best players in the world, for sure. He just knows near enough what to do in every spot. He doesn't make many mistakes. The majority of the time when he does make these tiny little mistakes on bluffs that he thinks are not gonna make it through, he's gonna like get rewarded later on for that because even if it doesn't work, he can afford to lose. In the long run, you'll make more chips from it if everyone kind of keeps that in their head. I'm pretty sure what Ludo is saying is that getting caught bluffing occasionally could work out to your advantage when you have it. Either that or something about the Enterprise's engines not being able to take anymore. Okay, Joseph, let's step into the mind of the master and sweat with Ola Shemian. Okay. It's been folded to Ludo in the cutoff, and he limps. What's with this limping nonsense? King Ten of Diamonds for Shemian on the button. I guess we got a raise in position. That is a raise to 8,000. Svez folds. Ah, oh, hello, Gully. What are you smiling at, you little chucklehead? Huh? He folds. Ludo calls. Shemian with the betting lead and the advantage of position. But he whiffs the flop. It's gonna be tough to make a full house this time. Gylik has checked. I'm fine with the C-bet here, but we should keep in mind we're going to get floated by Ludo a lot. Continuation bet of 10,000. Translation, Ludo's going to call us with any two here and then try to glass us on a later street. Three of diamonds on the turn, pairing the board. Gylik checks a second time. Check. Ola checks behind. Sure. I'm, I'm with him. 
And a deuce on the river, so a double paired board. I think getting Ludo to fold any piece of this board is going to be pretty tough with this run out. Oh, we don't have to try to get him to fold. Gaelic bets roughly half pot, 20,800. Look, we've got King High, and even though I don't think Ludo has a ton of pairs in his range, I think folding is the move here. Shemian does fold, and he was beat. Six is the hand for Gaelic. So I was wrong about the pairs, right about the fold. I'll take it. As long as these guys have tons of chips, they're going to be playing some pretty wacky hands. Well, we're heading over to Vanessa's table. She has shoved on Ollie Price, and he has been in the tank a while. He's probably scared of calling with the best hand, and Vanessa's still sucking out on him. Vanessa. Time, please. Someone at the table has called the clock on Ollie. Yeah, time to no call. Yeah, I know. Right, so, so. And one All he knows, he's got to call pretty light because like a truck making a turn, Vanessa is going to be a lot wider than most. Vanessa shows pocket sevens. Ollie called all in with a six of spades. I said Ollie was going to have to call pretty light, but I didn't think he'd go a six light. Well, there's a six on the flop. Gives him additional outs. He's going to need an ace or six on the river. He's out. I'll leave you to it. Surprised they're not calling the clock on him as he leaves the table. More chips for Vanessa Selbst. She is renowned for her aggressive play. And for getting involved in ridiculous pre-flop raising battles. Now Vanessa knows how little credit Kevin's going to be giving her for a hand most of the time. Vanessa re-raises a 4-bet to 79,000. Against just about any other player, I think this is the point where Kevin would probably ditch this like an ugly date on prom night. Whoa, he's just 5-bet to 131,000. Aya with Ace-9 offsuit. This is absolute insanity with these two hands. Come on, She six bet shoves. I call. You have ace jack? No. I have a pair. I have an ace nine. Correct reaction. The flop has an ace on it. <laughs> because you're Vanessa Selbst. Nice hand. And another ace for good measure. The needle. She can't believe it. I can't believe it. Can you believe it? As hard as it is to believe, that just happened. The worst play I've ever seen. What? She like was after me at the time. I have no idea why. And while we were gone, Vanessa won even more chips. Story checks out. As we head back to the feature table, blinds are up to 1,200, 2,400 with a 300 ante. Few new players have come to the main stage, including Hadi al from Lebanon. He passes, as does Naji Tanuri. Roman Koronev raising from the cutoff with Queen Four of Clubs. Folded to Ludovic Gailik in the small. He's got Koronev dominated with Queen Jack. No shot he folds. Let's see if he raises. He is out of position. It's a call. Olashemian in the big blind has a7. He calls as well. All pretty standard. It's a three-way. And Shemian flops best. Second pair. Action's been checked to the pre-flop aggressor. Seems like a pretty good board to see bet. The king should hit him enough. Koronev will continue into two opponents. 7,200.
Really, Ludo? He folds. But you're not going to get all of Shemmy in the fold of pear come. <laughs> Shemmy and Coles. Heads up to the turn. It's a four. Koronev now with a pair, but a nine to one underdog. Thinking your four is good here would be very, very silly. Action goes check, check. The river's a six. Kornev doesn't have a ton of showdown value, does not bluff. Oh, Shemian wins another hand. Yes, he does. Up to 492,300. So Ola Shemian continues to dominate. Still chip leader with a 205 big blind stack. Vanessa Selbst is also among the tournament bosses. Other notable names in the field include Mustafa Kanit and Ike Haxton. He's just bet enough on the river to put Andrus Namath all in. You need one little help. Just one little. Not a big one, just a little help. Guess it's worth a shot. If you call and lose, you'll look very silly on camera. <laughs> That's 50% of my thinking. Other 50% is the hand. This leads me to think Ike doesn't have it, but then that makes me think he does have it, and all I really know is I'm just glad I don't have to make this decision. Name it folds. This one. Okay. Ike didn't have it. He forgot to mention that if you fold and you lose, you will also look pretty stupid. Hope it wasn't anything too good, buddy boy. Mike Haxton up over 200k. Well, Team Pro is pretty well represented here on day two of the main event. Eugene Kachlov currently below average, as is Andre Akari. And then there are the guys who are among the tournament chip leaders. Jason Mercia. The Merce dog, top of the pack. <laughs> Thank you. And Mr. Jonathan Lodden. He's just won a pot against former grand final champ Nicola Schweety. So Johnny's now up to 140k, around average. Well, let's head back to the main feature table where we've been joined by a few new faces. Action is on Roman Koronev. He folds from under the gun. Ludovic Gailik, ace jack of diamonds. That's a raise to 5,500. King Jack of Clubs for Ola Shemian. Even though we know he's dominated, this is definitely a playable hand against an open from Angus McBarrel fire. Shemian calls. Folded to Anton Astapau on the button. This is the guy who busted Daniel Negrano at the start of day two. Well, he's got the best hand, but he just looks like the kind of guy that something bad is going to happen to. He's re-raised a 3-bet to 20k. Everyone's so deep, he can 3-bet for pure value. And with the blinds folding, it's back on Gailek. He calls. Both these players are out of position to someone and dominated by someone. Okay, I call. Shemian calls as well. Three way to the flop. And it's top pair for both Gailik and Astapau. Anton with the better kicker. This is a great flop for this cameraman from Wayne's World. He continues for 30,000. I think checking would have been fine there, too. It's pretty rare to get paid off by anything other than a weaker ace. Gailik calls. Shemian folds. Heads up to the turn. And with what's out there and ask the power stack, he may just have to shove the turn. Well, he improves to two pair. Gailik now drawing dead. 
Mala. There's the shove. Ludo could possibly get out of the way of this, but it's tough with two flush draws out there. Ludo faults. That's a nice fold. Ludo's definitely more of a shove er than a shove e. Uh, what a for me. Shemian would have had flush and straight draws. Would you have ace? I have ace shuffle diamonds. Ludo is no stranger to swings in poker, but how does he always get into these spots? got to just take everything as it comes. You can't think ahead too far. You just try and stay in the moment. Just make sure you don't make any mistakes. Obviously, if you're playing a lot of pots, which I do, like you're going to probably make a lot more mistakes than other players, but the best thing to do is just stay focused. Ludo will have to maintain focus if he's to regain some chips during the final few hands of the night. Found anything? What? Have you heard anything? Heard anything where? The machine. Is it making any noises? Oh, is that how that works? I've just been listening to Mumford and Sons. I will wait for you. Gotta be something out here. Only a few hands left to play on day two of the PokerStars and Monte Carlo Casino EPT Grand Final. And we're going to pick up the action between two former EPT champs. Steve O'Dwyer has flopped a flush draw. And Jean Monturi, who won Malta this season, has second pair. No, oh, I miss Jean Monturi's half Robocop looking Peter Weller face. Action goes check, check. And boom, O'Dwyer turns his flush. He bets 5,800. It's gonna be tough for Monturi to ditch a pair at this point. Maybe he'll get saved by a diamond on the river. Five, eight. He calls. The river card is a fourth diamond. Well, that's an annoying card for Steve. Check, check. And it's kind of annoying to lose to an 8-high flush also. Mm. O'Dwyer up to nearly 46k. I don't know what those noises meant, but that was definitely French. wonder what you do if he jams the river. <laughs> the tables are currently being balanced, which means Ludo is being moved out into the field for the remainder of the last level of the day. I feel sorry for that table. But on the main stage, we have still got Olashemian on the button. Now he's facing a raise from Hadi Al Azmar, a player from Lebanon who qualified online. Could see a call, could see a three bet. It's a three bet, a re raise to 15,500. And Al Azmar has called. No, seriously, don't do this with Jack 10, even suited when you're out of position, have such few chips. Don't. So uh, nothing flop. Shemian's still ahead with ace high. He goes check, check. Ward pairs on the turn. What's up with that shirt? It's like a black and white cookie. And last more checks again. Ticka ticka slim hat. He should really try to bluff this at some point with just jack high. Shemian checks behind. Six on the river. Alasma checks again. Check. And Shemian checks behind. Jack High. You gotta bluff because Jack High will never be the best hand. Alashemian wins another one. 
His right side likes the way he played it. His left side, not so much. Shemian up to 486,700. Meanwhile, out in the field, Johnny Loden and Dan Heimiller are going to the turn. Dan Heimiller is a bit of a conundrum. He's tilted more wizards than a malfunctioning Quidditch stick. By Quidditch stick, you mean broom. Yes. Johnny checks the nine on the turn. Check. Dan checks behind. Rivers another queen. Check. Johnny checks again. All in. And Dan shoves. Heimiller is kind of a crazy person, so it's really hard to fold to him if you have any kind of hand at all. Johnny calls. He must have some kind of hand. Heimiller with kings, a full house. You have to shoot. I don't have to shoot. Yeah, not in a situation where you have to shoot. Sorry, Johnny. He's right. Johnny had trip queens. Lost with the aces or kings or a low pair. High Miller gets him again. By the way, if you think Monaco's expensive, get your money saving tips from Dan High Miller. He can pinch a penny so hard it can turn into copper wiring. Brought those plastic cups from home. While well, we are staying out in the field. It is indeed. And Georgios Zizimopoulos has been three bet by Vanessa Selbst. Calls. So these two are going to the flop. Eight, eight deuce with two spades. Action check to the aggressor. The Vanessa aggressor. She continues. Pretty small continuation bet. Zimopoulos calls. Turn card. As the King of Hearts puts a second flush draw out there. Snur. And Georgios now leads, and he leads super small. Smaller than the last bet. Vanessa calls. The river card is a third eight. Zizimopoulos checks. And Vanessa moves all in. Huh, bet small, bet small, all in. Weird. Is it possible to find the aces and the right thumb? I don't think so. Maybe. George's calls. And they both have a king. On the river? No, no, no. Huh. Just the river. <laughs> I know. I put you on king, queen, or king, jack. It's a chop pot. And you know what they say. Yeah. Everyone loves a chop pot. That's a chop. When you're taking this long, I'm like, what? I, I told you, I told you. That I'm using all information. So day two is done, and it's time to bag and tag. Who filled out Johnny's bag for him? Clearly, he can read and write. OK, I'm ready. Can I get one? Please, please. Can I get your pen while you're, while you're tanking over here? I'm tanking also, Daniel. I'm too dizzy. Tanking the whole day, starts tanking the chip down. Well, after dominating most of the day, Ola Shemian finishes as chip leader, bagging up nearly 480k, nearly 200 big blinds. Only one bag, Ola? Pathetic. Yes, we will, Jason. Day three being bubble day of the EPT Grand Final. Jason's a top five stack. And despite chopping the last pot of the night, Vanessa Selbst is still among the chip leaders. Ninth overall with 285,000. So what kind of day was it for her? It was smooth sailing and then I lost a really big flip and then I was down and then I doubled up. And then I played a really big hand with a stupid hand. And then I got really lucky to double up. And then I got 
it in really good for a lot of chips. And I pretty much, I played like 10 pots today that were over 100K. I don't even know how that's possible when we end up like over 50 big blinds to play 10. I mean, that's crazy. It was a crazy day. Next time, Vanessa continues the aggression. Will it lead to big bucks or bad beats? Ludo's reunited with Ola at the feature table. <laughs> it's a little too early for this, huh? It's not time to celebrate yet. Friendship management players, we are eight players remaining. We're going to continue hand for hand. The short stacks need to hang on while the chip leaders take it in their stride. So excited about the bubble. You're welcome, guys. You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs>